The sun has just come out. Brilliant. Let's warm up head to toe. Let's start with the head. Shoulders nice and heavy and let the circle. Nice, gentle movement all the way around. Always remembering so you can lift the shoulders up to support the neck if it feels a little bit vulnerable at the back there. A gentle sway with the upper body so there's nothing forced, aggressive about this at all. And let's take it the other way. Bit of crackling, normal. And then let's move on to the shoulders. Hold the shoulders, elbows together, up, and then all oh, back and down, really helping the shoulders come down away from the ears. You can waggle the head side to side here to really draw them down. A few times, forwards up, and then back and down. See if you can get a little bit of flexion extension in the spine here. So as the elbows come forward around the back, separate the shoulder blades, and then open across the chest, a little bit of an upper back bend here, and then that depression of the shoulders, elbows into the waist. Last few times, peeling the shoulders up. I'm very, very keen on this idea of turning the armpits forwards and the biceps up to the ceiling so we externally rotate the shoulders. And then let's just take a swing, gentle rotation of the spine. So here the arms are lovely and heavy. Oh, there goes the click. I always have one click in my back every day, and then it's fine. So we can lift the back heel so we're not straining the knee. And then we'll take it on to the hip. So if you, they're not wide already, set the legs a little bit wider. Now here, if you've got tightness in your hips, get your knuckles and give them a good massage. Get those knuckles right in there as we circle the hips. So if you spend long periods of time sitting down, you're going to be a bit of an extra nurturing, loving for the front of the thighs, those hip flexors. And also then as we uh, go into adulthood, we tend to go down to the floor less and less, and we end up stretching the backs of the legs less and less. So getting a little bit of a hamstring stretch there, and then taking it the other way. For our lateral flexion of the spine, we'll take steeple top fingers, so hands clamped together, index fingers up to the ceiling. Let's take the legs in close and reaching overhead. So thinking about being the tallest you can be, those fingertips up to the ceiling whilst we have the heels rooting down. And then we'll take a gentle side to side sway. If you tend to have niggles in your lower back, just make sure your bottom doesn't stick out. Just tuck it under. So we're thinking about a really long spine. If you wish, you can hold the opposite elbow and then help to draw the elbow up and overhead. Last couple of times. All right, let's separate the legs. Let's think about this kind of goddess squat position. We'll start by rolling both shoulders as we did at the beginning, forwards up, back and down. And then we'll repeat again with the right side, rolling it back and down with straight legs and reaching for the little toe. So taking that twist, come all the way back up, roll both shoulders and come into that goddess squat. So open across the chest, Knees pointing out wide, and then to the other side, roll that left shoulder back and reach down for the left little toe, elbow pointing up to the ceiling. So there you go, let's just link those into a goddess squat, and then another roll back and twist. Roll both goddess squat, roll left and twist. But each time you might find you Reach a little bit further down towards the outer, outer leg, ankle. Nice vigorous movement with those shoulder blades. Here, shoulders back and down. Let's see if we can work the breath. Breathe out, in, out, in. So out, as we go steeper into that, breathe into the transition, breathe out into the twist. Get the heart rate up a little bit, last couple of rounds, and then we'll change the stance so that we're in more of a pyramid position, 
And we can work those hip flexors. So let's change left foot forwards, right foot back. Legs not too far apart. Now, first of all, just take a lift to so the back heel lifts. You see that the feet initially down, hips square to the front. Lift the back heel. Now, tuck your bottom under and take a little bend in the knee. So we should feel that nice stretch in the front of the hip. And we come up, foot down. So we start with this initially, peeling the heel off. Bottom tucks the tailbone down to the floor, get that nice hip flexor stretch, wide open across the chest, a bend into the knees and reset. Let's have two more of those and then I'm adding on a balance. So as you breathe out and lower down, pubic bone comes up to the ribs and we're zipping up, strengthening these abdominal muscles whilst we get that nice stretch for the front of the thigh into the hip flexors. Okay, so last time. Here, stay in this bent knee position. Keep your back foot on the floor, but place your weight into the front foot. Keep it all the way into the front foot. And when there's no weight left in the back leg, then lightly lift and place down. So we're adding on. So we lift the back heel, bottom tucks, the bend, hip flexor stretch, we're transitioning weight into the front foot. The back toe staying on the floor right until there's no weight in it. And then it's an effortless transition to lift, lower and return. Let's go twice more. Lift the back heel, tuck the bottom, take a bend, get that hip flexor stretch right into the quads. Then that transition of weight until it's fully in the front foot. So no rushing over, suddenly launching. That's where we don't have then the stability for the balance. We can re-bend, place the toe on the floor and reset last time. Lift the back heel, bottom tucks. Hip flexor stretch, tailbone long, weight into the front foot. And if you manage to clear the floor at the back and lift the leg, Maybe then you can straighten the front leg, but then let's re-bend that standing leg to come closer to the floor and lightly step back. How is that? Let's try to the other side. Easier second time because you know what to expect. Let's have the hips square to the front, peel the back heel off the floor. So toes, knees pointing forwards, tilt the pelvis under and get that bend into the knees. So knees long, longer reaching for the floor, nice stretch from the front of the hip. And then coming up, heel down. So we start with that initially, lifting the back heel, bottom tucks, take a bend and straighten up. So when we come into the balance, often when we do take yoga or Pilates classes, we rely on momentum, we just kind of hurl ourselves up. And we're interested in kind of functional patterns of movement so that we um, own and can almost freeze frame any particular movement because we have so much engagement in the muscles all around the body. Let's try going into the balance. So if we lift the back heel, tuck the bottom under, the knees bend. And remember, keep that toe on the back on the floor, right to the last minute. Once this leg has all the weight, it's, very, it's a kind of almost a nothing movement then to lift the back leg. Toe back down, straighten up. So let's lift the back heel, tuck, bend, coming into the front foot. Everything stays zipped up. That's why the toes on the floor, right to the last minute. The core engagement is kind of lifting you away from the floor so we don't dump into that standing leg. Maybe we straighten up, but then re-bend to gently lower, lower the foot to the floor. A couple more times. Feel, tuck, bend, weight into the front foot. Don't worry if we're not at the same pace, all fine. Better to go at your pace and to feel secure and stable. And we're trying to make the movement as very gradual, smooth, controlled. Let's have two more. Obviously good for the strength in that standing ankle. 
placing all the weight. Last one, feel the foot tilt, bend, and then let's come forwards into that front foot. So I'm absolute security that there's no weight, I'm no need for that back foot before I start to straighten up, lengthen and coming down. And then let's shake out. Nice shake out for the hips, knees, ankles. Brilliant. So like we're taking this sun salutation, come to the front of your space. We'll take a deep breath in and stretch overhead. Really reach and be long. And then come into a forward fold, hold the backs of the legs and get a good squeeze on the way down. Crown of the head to the floor. We can take a bend into the knees so the chest and thighs come together and then we can re-straighten. Twice more, bend and straighten. Last time. So we're stepping the right foot back into a lunge. Step back. Lower the knee, step your left foot back. We're going to take a cat cow to release your toes to the back, breathe in, look up, sit your chin out, doesn't matter if it looks silly. And then breathe out, chin to chest, round the back, point the toes. Once more, breathe in to look up, breathe out to round the back. We're taking a down dog or an extended child pose. Down dog, tuck the toes, send the hips up high and pedal it through from one foot to the other. Or, or if we're in a child pose, walk your fingertips all the way forward to get that length in the spine. Give yourself a moment here. Whether you're in extended child pose or a down dog, that right leg, we're stepping to the front. So we're in a knee lunge. Let's hold that right knee and circle. So the foot will come off the floor. It's like we're tracing a line, the outline of the foot. Nice big circle, maybe lunging a little bit deeper forwards and take it the other way. Still holding the knee. Now turn to look over your shoulders or twisting the spine. If you feel secure here, circle the arm back. And that's it. We're going to step to the front. Your back foot, step forward and take a deep breath in, stretching overhead. Breathe into the hands meet and return. We do the same leading with the left leg. Take a breath in and reach and stretch. Breathe out and fold. Squeeze the backs of the legs all the way down. Dangle the head, no tension in the neck. Bend the knees so the chest is on the thighs. And then re-straighten the legs. Twice more, a bend. Not overdoing it, just feeling a nice level of stretch for the backs of the legs. Last time, a knee lunge. We're stepping your left foot back into that lunge position. Lower the knee. Step your right foot back. Turn around to cat-cow. Breathe in and look up. Breathe out, round the back. Once more, breathing in to look up, breathing out to round the back. Extended child pose or down dog. If you're taking a down dog, tuck the toes under and lift the hips up high. Try to uh, prioritize lengthening the spine over, straightening the legs and getting the heels to the floor. Long spine. Whether you're in your down dog or in your child pose, let's step your left foot to the front, the back knee down, and we're circling the other hip now. So a nice big move with that knee. So we're working into the hip flexors of the back leg, also the stabilizers, the knee, ankle, and this active leg. And then take it the other way. With a twist, so the opposite hand is still on the floor, but we can press into this front knee and take a twist and look over your shoulder. Only if you feel secure here, we can sweep the arm back and take a lovely sweeping, opening movement for the chest. Then hands to the floor, we're stepping your back foot forwards. 
Come to the front, roll up through the spine, open the arms, breathe in, hands meet, and breathe out, return. Wonderful. Check out the legs. We're coming down to the floor. So I'm going to lower the camera. You can take a Pilates roll down if you wish, chin to chest, rolling down through the spine. And we'll meet with the legs out in front of us, ready. So we're going to go straight into a forward fold. But let's keep the knees bent. Reach for the toes if you can. Otherwise, we can hold the shins. And we're rounding the back for this first one. And maybe you can send your heels away a little bit. But it's a, a nice stretch of the back of the body with a little bit of a sway. So if we, if we can even hold behind the knees and have that lovely rounded stretch of the back of the body. And then we change the emphasis, thinking about more the Pilates spine stretch. So lengthening up through the spine, legs straight or bent. A little bit of a bend is fine. So long through the spine, into the neck. Take a deep breath in, and as you breathe out, we're reaching without that rounding. So it's a long spine, reaching into something just beyond your toes, and then breathing in to reset. Shoulders back and down. So using the breath out, that corset muscle around your waist, putting in. Notice the head starts to dip forward, so there's an even curve along the spine into the neck. What we want to avoid is sticking the chin out. Sometimes we see people craning their neck in, a, in an effort to get into a deeper foot forward fold. One way we're looking at this is if we think about the distance between the chin and the chest in an upright position as we come into that spine stretch, it's the same distance reaching beyond the toes, then resetting shoulders back and down, two more of these spine stretches. The long for that reset upright position, breathing out and coming into that folding, reaching position. Last time here, and then we'll be going into the Pilates roll back. So for the roll back, if you know you're confident with this, we just need to make sure we've got space to roll back to. So you can go straight into the roll back. If this isn't for you, we bend the knees and let's just work on that C curve. So shoulders back and down, and then we dip down from the base of the spine to for wallpaper and no air bubbles, small movements to imprint one vertebra at a time as we go down. And then we can use our hands on the legs to help rebuild and come up. So your version is fine, whichever you go for. Legs may be straight, maybe we're clasping the whole body down for a full body stretch. And then coming up, reaching for the toes, working those core muscles, flowing up and down. Don't worry if it's a little bit jerky. Over time, this will become much smoother movement. You can use the fabric of your clothes to gently draw you up. We're going slowly enough that we can use every muscle in your core, in the back of the body, so we've got that articulation through the spine, which is really calming and nice for easing out tension in the back of the body. So whether you're taking C curve or all the way back, we are going to move on to a reverse curl. So for that, it may be your legs are straight. We lift the legs overhead and the hips come up. If they're not coming up, we can take the knees into a bent position, place fists into the floor and use a little bit of momentum to try and hook the, the hips off the floor. So this is very much about the lower abdominal muscles, and let's stick with this. A little bit of momentum, as I say, is fine initially because over time, those muscles that we use will become more accustomed to engaging in order to lift the hips. So as long as we're just feeling fatigue and use of those muscles in the lower abdomen, it's fine to keep going, but no strain. If you're feeling you're arching the back, would take the movement into a much smaller range. We can have the knees into the chest and the intention of lifting the hips will be enough to use those muscles. 
Let's try to avoid clenching in the jaw. Nice, soft, around the jaw, the chin is tucked into the chest. So your version, the legs may be straight, maybe tapping down overhead, massaging the back on the way down. If we really press the arms into the floor, we're toning those triceps to find just what's a good level of work for you, upping the heart rate a little bit, but our primary target is these lower abdominal muscles. I think I'm edging off my mat. <laughs> Last three, we've got this. Remember, you can bend the knees, a little bit of a hook. That's all good. And then let's take a full body stretch. So where we've been in contracting those muscles of the core, let's now give them a good, good stretch and reach overhead. And then we've not finished with the abs, we're taking the double leg stretch. So let's start with the arms first of all. Arms plugged into the sockets, the shoulders on the floor. Keeping the chin tucked, let's just take the arms to maybe a 45 degree angle where the shoulders are still down away from the ears and then we turn them back up. So shoulder stabilization, scapula stabilized, flat to the floor. Now be aware of when the arms come overhead, the lips might want to flare open. Let's keep those front ribs together so we have that upper abdominal strength. So your oblique muscles working hard to keep the ribs together. So if this all feels fine, we'll add on the legs. So take the legs up into a tabletop position. As the arms go overhead, we'll extend the legs, but be fussy. Now about keeping your spine in exactly the same place. If you feel you're arching the spine here, stop and then return to the starting point. So maybe a small movement, just testing how far we can take those levers away from the center point before sweeping the arms back and returning. So here's our full movement, reaching 45 degree angle, arms open, and they return to the outsides of the legs. Checkpoints here, if we picture where the spine is in that perfect neutral spine position, we want to keep exactly the same curves in the spine as we lengthen the arms and legs away from the core. So it's typically here in this open space that we might be tempted to arch the spine. And if it's not possible to use your core muscles enough to keep the same curves in the spine will make the movement smaller. So it may be just a small movement away from the center point and returning. You know, be patient and, and fussy about the details because we need to protect your lower back and slowly build up the stamina resilience of your core muscles over time. You're doing well, we've got three more of these. Your level. We can maybe pause in that open position just to check, can we stable? Can we push our resilience a little bit more? Last two. Wonderful. And last one. We'll come on to all fours and take a pigeon, because even in this movement here where it's all about the core, we will be firing up the hip flexors, so the pigeon should feel pretty nice. So from all fours, if we sweep our mirror, your left shin forwards and take your back leg away, releasing the toes. If this isn't happening, bend the knee a little bit out to the side, more of a mermaid position. So take a moment to really lengthen as much as you're capable, how it feels to a level that feels good. Stretching the front of this leg, shoulders back and down, a little bit of a sway side to side. Over time, this lifted hip will lower and become more aligned with the active, the front hip. And then let's come into a fold. So here we've got the upper body weight on the front thigh to just work into those external rotators of the, the front leg, the front hip a little bit of a rock, or just a static folding, allowing heaviness 
and a sense of spilling relaxation to flow through the body. One more big breath here before we come back to all fours. Then we take it to the other side. So hands back under the shoulders. Take your knees back, maybe a little sway. And then it's the other knee coming forward, shin to the floor. And you can knee and toe your back leg a bit further away if you've got a bit more scope there to stretch your back leg. A little bit of a rock side to side, just testing how the hip flexors are feeling on this side. Nothing forced. Take a breath in and then we can start to melt down towards the floor. Hands can stack for the head. If the knees are at all uncomfortable here, do back off. You can draw your foot closer in. You can bend that back leg and maybe we're just in a more upright position. So feel what's a nice, nice level of stretch for the hips. Amazing. We're going to come up to a seated position, seated position, brother. So when you're ready, let's take the legs in front, cross the legs. Now this is one for if we're sitting for long periods of time, it's from the Alexander Technique discipline. We really think about a figure eight, drawing a figure eight over the sit bones. So can you feel if you come forwards towards me, a little bit over to the left, back so as though you're circling around the sit bone on the left, and then come diagonally forward across to the right and circling over that sit bone. So figure of eight on the floor, we take the small movement. Um, it doesn't seem like it's very much, but if we uh, practice this tiny figure of eight movement when we're sitting for long periods of time, it just keeps the spine from kind of locking and uh, from us getting stiff in the hips. So let's just have a few rounds of just feeling a figure eight. Yeah, the arms can sway, but this is something that you can practice and get so good at that you, it barely even looks like you're moving. <laughs> so just feeling that kind of swirling movement that's changed across in the legs. Obviously, if we're sitting at a desk, we've got a nice even position with the legs. And hopefully your feet are flat to the floor. We have the, the thighs maybe slightly dipping down or the knees in line with the hips. So a nice um, line of the thighs parallel to the floor or slightly dipping down towards the knees. So from that stable position, you can then just work into this figure eight position. And you can see it's a nice easy movement for the spine, but it's really good just for keeping the hips from seizing up. All right. We're going to do the same standing up. Hands to the floor. And let's take a roll up through the spine. Head lots to come up. It's the same kind of thing. If you're standing for long periods of time, you can place your feet hip distance apart. Just about to see, aren't you? And then this gentle sway. Figure eight. So I'm exaggerating it here, and if no one's watching or you don't care who's watching, making a nice big movement here is just lovely for the hips. Keeps everything from seizing up. You can try going the other way. That's a bit confusing, but it's good to practice and challenge your brain. And then you can maybe make that movement a little bit smaller. But just try to. Recall this if you're standing for long periods of time or you're sitting for long periods of time. All right, to finish off, we're going to take a deep breath overhead. Through that, come into a fold, hold the backs of the legs, bow the head. Soften your knees, roll up through the spine twice more. Big breath in, reaching overhead. I'm sorry, my head has disappeared. <laughs> Breathing out, coming into your forward fold. Last time, soften the knees to roll up through the spine. Deep breath in, stretching the arms overhead. And your last time, coming into a fold. And just so that I can still see you, you can still see what you mean. I'm coming to a kneeling position, let's hold the shoulders and make sure we reset the shoulders in a really nice position for the rest of the day. So just being mindful over time, we cold, with age, the shoulders will round forwards if we're not careful. So pick them up, lift them, and settle them back down. This will help the shoulder blades settle back as if into back pockets. 
Try some more, nice big movement, waking up the shoulder joint, easing out the head, and then I think you're ready for the rest of your day.